Red light therapy is something that scientists, clinicians, and estheticians not easy to say, have become more and more interested in over the last few decades as increasing numbers of studies point to its regenerative effects on our bodies. It's thought to be helpful in healing wounds and supporting tissue repair, boosting hair growth, treating some skin conditions, mending sun damage, and reducing the effects of aging on the skin, and even improving joint health to some degree. Among its fans is Dr. Tian Xu. She's an emergency doctor and a medical trainer who also has her own London-based aesthetics practice and has recently partnered with another doctor to open a red light therapy clinic called Rejuvenate Medical. Her passion for and her understanding of red light therapy is really impressive and in this interview she sets out why she believes red light is a transformative treatment that should be on all our radars. Dr. Shen, thank you for joining me. Um, it's, it's good to meet you. I know that you are an emergency doctor, uh, but you also have your own aesthetics practice in London. And more recently, you've opened a clinic specialising in red light therapy. So I'm really interested to hear about why it's red light that stands out to you among other treatments. Um, but first, could you explain what red light is? Because um, there can be a lot of confusion around infrared and laser and multi-spectrum light. What is red light therapy and what can it do? Sure. Um, hi, Claire. Thank you so much for having me on here. Um, this is one of my favourite topics to talk about. So um, I hope we've got enough time today. So. Uh, let's start with red light therapy. So what red light therapy is, it's using a particular wavelength of light. Um, in the, it, it looks red, so it's, a, it's red light, which is about, to be more scientific, is about 630 nanometers in wavelength. Okay. Um, and also using a bit of near infrared light, which is around the sort of 810 nanometer wavelength. So near infrared is not, it's just slightly outside of the visible spectrum. Um, and it just sort of provides a little bit of heat, um, not too much, not the infrared. So the far infrared is a lot more heating and mm. uh, it's used in saunas a lot more. But the near infrared light um, just warms up, can warm up the skin a little bit, um, but it has more healing properties, also, you know, different to the far infrared. So red light therapy, um, very often it uses the combination of the red light and the near infrared red light um, to shine on parts of the body or the whole body to achieve a therapeutic effect. Um, it's a form of low level light therapy as opposed to high level light therapy, like intense pulse light, IPL. Some people may have heard of it. And lasers is also a type of light therapy, but lasers are very, very strong and intense and, you know, can burn the skin. Um, it's, it's very focused light. Yeah. So, so yeah, so red light therapy is also known as biomodulation, uh, photobiomodulation, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a, a form of low level light therapy. So what, what range of uses would you be looking at it for? So the application of red light therapy is huge. I mean, there's so many different indications that um, can benefit from this. So the most commonly used um, applications are for boosting energy. And this could be just generally, you know, the energy that you feel when you feel like you're sort of low energy, low mood, feeling tired, and fatigued. You know, that's a very kind of vague presentation. It could have lots of different factors affecting it. Um, so at the very cellular level, red light therapy can help to boost the level of energy within the cells. And then the, the sort of knock on effect of that is that once the cells have more energy to, to use, it, then um, it can do what it needs to do quicker and more effectively. So just having more energy means that the body can detox better, can, can rest and recover better, can sleep better. The immune system can work better. So, you know, the main benefits that we're seeing from, from red light therapy is to, to um, speeding up healing um, and injury recovery, um, helping people with sleep, boosting the energy in people with chronic fatigue syndrome, for example, or just generally, you know, chronic low level fatigue. Um, 
brain fog. It's been really effective for, for clearing brain fog. Um, and and also um, skin rejuvenation, you know, that, that was kind of the main reason related to what I do is I know it's beneficial for reducing inflammation and for, for skin rejuvenation, but actually I am a doctor as well. So the whole health um, side of it and the, the health benefits really uh, interest me as well. So, yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's like the perfect treatment It's safe. It's really effective. Um, and I would say it's my favorite treatment at the moment. I turn 49 next week and I'm thinking just about everything you mentioned, I tick every box. Brain fog, tick. Fatigue, tick. Problem sleeping, tick. <laughs> A need of anti-aging, tick. Yeah, so it's, it's very interesting. Um, so what kind of, I mean, what would you expect if you came into clinic um, for a red light treatment? What does that what does that look like? Is it a whole body thing every time or what I have in my clinic is the Novothor whole body red light therapy machine. Um, and this is essentially it's a medical grade device. Um, so it came from the US. Um, very few places in the UK have it at the moment. Um, I think you know, with regards to red light therapy, I think sometimes the UK is a little bit behind everywhere else in recognizing the effective the effectiveness of it, um, and also the the a lot of the medical profession don't realize how effective it could be. And I think this is why I, when I met with um, Dr. Andrew Greenland, who is my co-medical director for the red light rejuvenate medical, um, we got on so well we were on the same page you know he is also a &E consultant and he's got a functional medicine clinic um and so i was a &E doctor with a, a skin rejuvenation clinic so i was he was kind of treating things from, from the inside out and i was treating things from the outside in but both of us were focusing on a very sort of holistic um kind of holistic treatment package that looks more at prevention rather than doing quick fixes. Um, and the red light just fell in the right in the middle between where we both were at. And it's beneficial not only for the skin, but also for health in general, um, as I said before. So we decided to get the Novothor whole body red light therapy machine because right. it is the best one on the market. Um, and actually in the US during the COVID pandemic, the, the company actually had, um, they created special versions of these, which are essentially half of the machine that, that we have. And they were designed to shine on top of like an ITU bed over a patient. And they were showing really prom promising effect, um, benefits in helping these people heal and recover from COVID. And the results were really good, but obviously it's, you know, it's kind of small sample, so you can't yeah. really... You can't really say this is, uh, you know, really high quality evidence. Yeah. Um, so, so we've got the whole body red light therapy machine and the benefit of having a whole body treatment is that it's very intense um, and you, you get the best possible kind of result from it because it's so intense. And also it doesn't take that long. You know, the, the, this whole body treatment is 15 minutes. Wow. And some people think it's, oh, it's only 15 minutes. Are you sure it's effective? But actually... The machine has 3000 bulbs um, in it and you're kind of based in light in red and near infrared light. 15 in 15 minutes, like you, you come out, you feel great. You feel you, this energy boost, but everyone feels slightly different because it, their body needs different things. So, for example, if someone has been very sleep deprived, very fatigued, they actually might come out of the treatment feeling more tired because that's mm -hmm. what your body, but that's what their body needs is to to rest and to sleep, and then generally what they find is that they sleep really well that night and the next day they feel a lot more refreshed, a lot more awake. So for someone who doesn't have very major issues, they might come out of the treatment feeling really energized, like their brain yeah. just seemed to work quicker. Um, and I certainly experienced that myself. And I always say to, to people who work with me, we all of us need to have a red light treatment before we go into a meeting because it's just <laughs> so much more effective that way. I need a red light following me 24 hours a day is what I need now. I'm just going to have one flashing on the top of my head all day. <laughs> 15 minutes sounds great. How often do you recommend people have these treatments to keep up the benefits? So generally, it depends on what they're trying to uh, achieve out of it. If they have an actual medical issue that they're trying to resolve, then I would recommend initially having two or three sessions in a week. 
Right, okay. A few weeks, just have a block of treatments that's relatively close together. Because each treatment, after each treatment, you notice some improvement. It, it, you know, it's not magic. Um, and some people might not notice too much after one. So you have to be quite realistic. But then having a block of treatments, the results really uh, accumulate. And after several treatments, then you gradually start to notice you just kind of in a, you know, mood is better, sleeping better, just feeling more refreshed. The brain fog just seems to clear. Um, and all these things sort of start to happen at the same time. And one of the really unexpected things that I found for myself was my hair started thickening up, which is great because after I had COVID, my hair was falling out like crazy. It really thinned out. And I, you know, it was getting me down and I was thinking I need to chop my hair short so that it looks more, you know, the volume looks a bit yeah. more. A bit yeah. more. Um, but then after having, I think I noticed it after a couple of months of having the treatment once or twice a week, um, I had set an appointment for hairdressers and I set the appointment like two months before that and I was like look I think I need to chop my hair short because it's so thin it's ridiculous but then by the time the appointment came my hair had thickened up so much and I was like actually I don't you know just trim it so I've kept it long and it's you know it's a nice thickness um, yeah. I, I'm so happy and that was unexpected but yeah. I can understand how that could happen because of the principle of how red light works it just gives the body energy to do what it needs to do so everything works a bit better. I mean, what what kind of research supports this? Is there much out there um, that's been done on, on red light therapy? There's a huge amount of research. There's something like, there's over 5,000 articles um, on red light and, and various, various experiments done uh, with red light. A lot of them, um, so the earlier research were mainly animal-based studies because actually red light originated from from nasa they were using red light um, on plants to help them grow better because plants we all know plants are quite light sensitive mm. um, and then when they had positive results with with plants and they were trying to use it in some farms with animals and it, they found it really helped calm down the animals it was certain wavelength of light and you know just sort of made them made them grow better the mood was better um, and then um, it moved on to to humans so but probably for a good 20 30 years at least it's been used in humans treating various uh, medical conditions mainly with reducing inflammation controlling pain um, and then the sort of boosting the immune system kind of alongside all of that but maybe not not as a primary reason for using it um, and skin rejuvenation and you know people with um, acne on the back for example it's very dif difficult to treat because you can't really put skincare products on there very easily um, but something like red light you know can really help to reduce the inflammation in the spots and when the skin is not inflamed then it has a chance to heal and then when this when the skin is healthier then it's less likely to um, to have breakouts and spots so you kind of try to get the body and the skin in into into a virtuous cycle um, so that things are things get better and better fantastic um, and so for anti-aging um, which a lot of my viewers are interested in um, what kind of results are you seeing there I mean is it are we talking very subtle or what what scenario would you recommend that for so in terms of um, effects on the skin if you were having red light therapy purely for skin rejuvenation mm -hmm. I think you'd be quite disappointed because you know changes in skin are quite subtle mm -hmm. but what um, and the people who have the red light mask at home for example mm -hmm. if you're using if you're shining it on your face for I don't know 15-20 minutes a day every single day you might eventually notice some improvement you know the skin texture might gradually improve mm -hmm. so i would say as a as an adjunct to a good skincare routine and some of the other skin treatments that um, that you can do it definitely will benefit you and it will help the skin to stay more healthy uh, you mentioned that it's safe how do we know it's safe so we we know that um so the light that we are exposed to from the sun is a mixture of lots of different wavelengths and that 
uh, within that is the visible spectrum, which is, you know, if you if you shine white light through a prism, you see the rainbow. So the rainbow is essentially the visible spectrum and it goes from violet um, all the way through to red. Um, on the other side, on beyond the visible spectrum, um, outside of violet, you've got ultraviolet light. And we all know it's UV light and we know that UV light can damage the skin. Um, it causes a skin to tan. It can lead to skin cancers. Um, it can burn the skin. And then on the other side of the red light, we've got near infrared and then infrared. And then so the wavelengths are getting longer and longer as you go outside of the red side. Um, and then you've got things like microwaves, radio waves that are very long wavelengths. So there's within the visible spectrum, we know that the closer to the ultraviolet uh, we get to, the higher energy that wavelength of light is. And therefore, the more likely it will cause damage to the skin. So the, the red um, wavelengths are very gentle. They are, because if you think about it, um, like wave, uh, radio waves, um, they're very long wavelengths and they're around us all the time because you put the radio on, you can listen to the radio. So longer wavelengths tend to be safer because they, they just, they can pass straight through you. The longer the wavelength is, the lower the energy and they can pass through, through tissue um, more deeply, more easily, and they cause less damage. So in the red wavelengths, you, we know that it can penetrate to about, you know, a good sort of three to four centimeters at least into the skin. So it's not just absorbed by the superficial part of the skin, but deeper tissues as well. And we know that it's low energy, so it's not causing any damage to the skin. It doesn't um, and because it's low energy, it doesn't stimulate the skin in that way, like ultraviolet. It doesn't cause tanning. So it doesn't lead to skin cancer. Mm. Um, and the way that it works is that it, it sort of gently vibrates the cells and it passes the energy, sort of converts the light energy into a form of energy that the mitochondria in the cells can use to mm. release energy from food. So everything in the body is, is chemical reactions. And so this light energy is actually then converted to this chemical energy that, that makes the cells function a bit faster. That's all it is. And it doesn't cause any damage to the cells. So we know it's safe because of all the evidence we have. Well, I, I tell you, I've never heard anything so complicated explained so well and so clearly. So thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. You are incredibly knowledgeable about that. Um, Fascinating. And so, I mean, these at home face masks um, that, that so many people have now, the red light mask, is that something you would recommend? Or do you think that, you know, compared with a whole body treatment, there's going to be minimal results? What, what's your view? Um, I think it depends on several factors. Um, whether you, one, whether you have the time to actually use it. Mm. Um, and to what you're expecting from it. So I think, you know, red light is so safe. So having some, some localized red light devices um, at home is never a bad thing. So I think in some ways you, you can never get too much of the red light, you know, but um, the whole body machine, you, you probably wouldn't want to be in there all day because you might become dehydrated after a little while because that's very intense treatment. But these at-home treatments are very safe. But after talking to you, my red mask is going on tonight. I can tell you that. <laughs> so immediately after I'd spoken to Dr. Tian, I rushed to look out my red light face mask and I've been using it and my husband has been snoozing with it on his head to try and boost hair growth as well. So I'll link to the mask that I use in the description below, along with a few of the market leaders to give you a feel for the range of options and prices out there. I thought it was really interesting to hear Dr. Tian's experience and perspective, and she's going to be back next week as we continue this series of expert interviews on the Honest Channel. And we'll be talking about the safety and effectiveness of at-home anti-aging devices, something that I know a lot of you and me are interested in. And she offered some really helpful insight. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And please do let me know if you've tried red light therapy. Has it helped you? What do you think about it? I always love to hear your comments. So for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.